If it'll win a few people to Jesus, we probably ought to do it. For 50 years, God has orchestrated, directed, and moved in ways no one could ever have imagined. Millions of salvations, baptisms, churches planted, and leaders raised up. Only God could do a work of this magnitude. What's even more amazing is that for 50 years, through the Ministry of International Commission, God has allowed us front row seats to witness His power at work. Let's go back and see how it all began. In 1965, God called a young farmer with a heart for Latino farm workers named Ben Meath, along with his wife and three children, to move to Seminole, Texas to pursue harvesting cotton. The Lord began to burden on my heart Latin Americans. And so uh, I like to farm. I like West Texas. But that was how God really burnt and moved us there. Having a heartbeat for missions and reaching the nations, the Meaths were led to First Baptist Church Seminole, a church that shared Ben's desire to go wherever the Lord led. God used this church and Pastor Gene Hawkins mightily in Ben's life. In 1970, God called Ben to be a part of an evangelism team to Japan. We took 40 people from our church on that mission trip to Japan. And people were able to see the light of Jesus. In a nation where few had even heard the name of Jesus, many received the gift of salvation. But as I came home from Japan, God just said to me, what you saw happen in Japan would work in Mexico. And so that really was the call. This season of life held a series of crop failures and along with that confusion and fear and uncertainty. But in moments the world would see his failures, it would lead Ben to start down a path that would for decades to come be one that could rightly be labeled God knew. The Baptist General Convention of Texas was sponsoring a program that paired Baptist churches in Texas and Mexico along the Rio Grande. Ben had been appointed as the missions coordinator at First Baptist Church Seminole, and he took a few men to visit a new church plant in Ojinaga, Mexico. From that moment on the streets of Ojinaga, God began shaping the ministry that Ben would lead for the next 20 years of his life. What worked in Japan did in fact work in Mexico, so much so that God kept bringing in more and more connections for Ben. Faithful servants like Abel Gomez and Francisco Nunez saw the work God was doing through Ben and joined in. I want to serve God. I want to see people saved. I want to see churches grow. Ultimately, responding to an invitation from churches in Chiapas, Mexico to send teams over Christmas in 1973, Gene Hawkins told Ben it was time to establish a separate organization to carry out this vision God was revealing to them. With Gene's simple but profound statement of, if it will win a few people to Jesus, we should probably do it as the confirmation, these two men and seven others gathered on July 28, 1973 to ask the Lord's guidance. That prayerful deliberation resulted in the founding of International Crusades, an instrument God continues to use today in response to his call to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. To divine appointment, God puts us at the right table in the right person's home where he has brought that person that he wants to hear about his blessed son. It's not because of our talent. It's not because of our ability. It's not because of, of our experience or our culture or anything. It is only because that God loves lost people. Well, it's common everyday people telling common everyday people about Jesus. That's it in a nutshell. In 1975, Ben attended the Billy Graham Crusade in Lubbock, Texas. Here he saw the simple success of the prayer and preparation model used prior to the crusade called Operation Andrew. There's a preparation period which has to be strong and has to be developed so that you're, you're tilling the ground to prepare for the harvest that will come, Mr. Farmer. 
The catalyst for thousands of gospel conversations from that point forward was the impact of this prayer-based approach to evangelism and discipleship. The following year, one trip grew to two. The next year, two grew to three. And so the growth began. Wherever God would open the door, we would go. We would depend upon them for invitations. We never initiated the contact except make it available. God paved a way for this work to flourish not only in Mexico and Central America, but throughout South America and into Canada. Within 10 years, over 160,000 new believers had been added to the kingdom. Then in 1984, the ministry expanded beyond the Western Hemisphere, pushing its way to Asia and Western Europe. Over the next 20 years, doors were opened in Africa, Oceania, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East. God moved faster than anyone ever anticipated, bringing more souls into his kingdom as believers around the world, joined the work in numbers far beyond what we could have imagined. But God knew. With more laborers with a missional heart came a larger vision for reaching the globe. In 1993, seeing an innovative opportunity for lower cost and greater multiplication, IC began funding national to national partnerships to equip nationals to reach the lost in their own region without accompanying American teams. The nationals can respond to their own people so much better than um, a foreigner can. Essential to the plan for national to nationals, or end to ends as they came to be called, is that local churches and local believers who know their own culture and are aware of social and economic barriers can successfully reach out in their own communities. Just like the international partnerships, a week of house visits is planned to share the gospel. But logistics such as translators, international travel, and housing for American teams is eliminated. This again has enabled not only tremendous growth in the number of evangelism partnerships, but has allowed IC to reach into nations where doors have been closed to American Christians. That's one way God's reaching all those countries. We thought, you know, we can never go there as Americans. There's no place we can go that God has not already been. Missions has got to be done by people who sit in the church pews and say, I'm, I can be used. With the heart of IC aligned with God's heart for reaching the nations, the board gathered in the mid-1990s, united in a goal to be actively working in every corner of the world every year. God is continuously opening doors to partner with believers in new countries. With new opportunities growing in predominantly Muslim areas in the early 2000s, the need arose for the ministry to consider amending the name International Crusades. The leadership prayerfully determined to adopt the name International Commission as a reflection of Jesus' global command. God called us for a purpose. He said, go into the, all the world and proclaim my way to the all creation. Jesus said, be my witnesses, be my martyrs, go, read them, Teach them, disciple them, baptize them. As the new century dawned, IC continued to expand its global footprint with growth in both international partnerships and end-to-ends. In spite of changes in leadership and an unforgettable day that became known simply as 9-11, God kept providing the way through often rocky paths of international relationships, cultural and social upheaval, and the emerging challenges to Christianity within the U.S. International Commission just kept following God's lead. Courage rises when the cause is greater than the circumstance. We just wanted to do what God wanted us to do. We need to believe what kind of God we have. Even as the ministry was navigating the global emotional upheaval and fear following 9-11, God was in the process of revealing His plan for IC's future home. His clear provision of land and resources resulted in an international headquarters in Louisville, Texas. Dedicated in September of 2002, it features not only space for the day-to-day -day operation of IC, but also space that allows church plants to begin. 
By 2004, the amount of end-to-ends exceeded the number of international partnerships with American teams. This strategy of reaching the nations had sparked a fire within the hearts of believers. The following decade held more than we could anticipate. From 2010 to 2019, the number of international trips conducted more than doubled from all other previous international trips combined. With more of these evangelism partnerships came more opportunities to share the gospel. And with it, the number of those who heard the gospel and received Christ more than tripled the amount of professions of faith made in all of IC's history. Within this decade, many more laborers felt the call to go and the number of IC participants grew tenfold worldwide. By the end of the decade, the annual number of decisions had climbed to more than three million. God knew. Behind every number, there's a face. There's a, a, a life. I'll never get tired of watching the miracles of knowing that somebody that was headed for hell has now got a destiny in heaven. Even a global pandemic in early 2020 could not keep the Holy Spirit from moving among leaders and church members scattered around the world. Almost completely without U.S. participants, they continued to use the Operation Andrew model to extend their reach into their communities more and more as the year wore on. In fact, with perhaps the most impactful global event since the world wars in full force, over 1.6 million people still heard the gospel in 2020, resulting in over 750,000 decisions for Christ. Again, God knew. As I sat at my desk on the Friday that the pandemic began, I asked the Lord, we're a global ministry. Father, what do we do now? He seemed to take me immediately to Acts 1-8 and said, you know, International Commission has been doing a pretty good job with Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. But what about your Jerusalem and your Judea, North America? And so that's exactly what happened. We began to do what I see has been doing for these 50 years around the world, right here in North America and saying, learn how to share your faith with all these training tools, share in your community, and continue to go around the world. Reaching our own Jerusalem lays heavy on our hearts, and that's where North American partnerships come in. Through IC's history, there were some occasional attempts to duplicate the success of the global outreach on this continent. But in 2020, with the clear mandate that Jesus outlined in Acts 1-8, a new vigorous, intentional effort to partner with churches on home soil began to take shape. Utilizing Operation Andrew Methods, teams are now being sent out to share the good news with a nation that is in desperate need of a revival. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says to go, and it says to go to all nations. And, you know, you can stay in one country and still reach a whole slew of nations. In a nation now filled with virtually every global religion and philosophy, the IC team redeemed the time in 2020 to begin the process of providing tools to equip and enable believers as they seek to have meaningful gospel conversations with anyone still in need of the hope found in that good news. Through webinars, classroom training, videos, and printed resources, these tools are now being used throughout this continent and are being translated and adapted for use anywhere in the world. The work of the gospel has been entrusted to God's people, and the Ministry of International Commission has been held in the Lord's hands for these 50 years. Ben Meath could not have imagined where and how the Father would use International Commission 50 years ago. But God knew, and God still knows what the future holds. We can say that we grew up with IC and that made us understand the importance of our generation working on mission. And we are looking forward to continuing what you started. Thank you so much. Thank you. We want to lead as many people to Jesus as we can. I believe that with the mission and the heart of IC and with the people praying, God use me, God send me, that the next 50 years can be the greatest 50 years, all for God's glory.
the Lord said, go, go. He'll use anybody that will give him anything. Do not be scared. If God calls you to go, you need to go. If it went a few people to Jesus, I guess it'd be worth it. Join us on the continuing journey in praying, in giving, and in going.